Hey, thanks for stopping in. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, September 20th. On this show, we like to talk about OTC and penny stocks, or in other words, any stock under $5. doesn't matter what market they're sold on, the OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, as long as they're under $5, they qualify as a penny stock. Now, I'm looking for hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm looking for stocks that have great chart setups, maybe no news or buzz, but they just look ready to break out. Or we could follow all of the chatter, all of the buzz online. I like to look at the news every single day. This is news I've looked at over the last four or five days. Oldest is at the top, newest is down here at the bottom, and that is all OTC market news. Now, there's no financial reports in there. There's no public offerings. It's just events, their acquisitions, their mergers, things like that, the juicy news. Now, I do most of my research for OTC stocks right here, about 99.9% .9 of it. I love this site. This is a professional site. It's not just a site where they gather information up for us like FinViz or something. This is their business. They take care of all the information for the OTC markets. This was put up just for investors like us, a site we could trust. And this is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. So there's no reason to be running around the internet looking for current information. That's what this site is set up for. Use it. It'll save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. So how did our OTC market finish today? It doesn't look as bad as yesterday. I'm going to refresh this, make sure our numbers are up to date. Hey, we do get a little bit more. Dollar volume today, we're up to 1.7 billion. What were we at the other day? 1.3 billion hit a low of 1.2 billion. Our average used to be 2.1. We're at 1.7. It's a little bit of an increase. That's something to brag about. We have share volume. That's jumped. We are now over 10 billion again, 11.3 billion. God, please have it continue growing. Trades, we're still hovering around that 250,000 trades. We just can't seem to get away from there. So there's not a lot of activity across the OTC market as a whole, but there's lots of kernels popping out there. There's lots of stocks that have catalysts that are moving. And I've got a few to show you right now. You know I do. Come on, I'll show you what I got. All right, folks, the first stock we're going to take a look at here is ticker NUMD. This is New Med Plus. Finished today at five and a half cents with just a little over 7% gains. They're on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. The B literally stands for better, honestly. And it's better because you have to audit your financials to be here. On disclosures, management just passes us numbers that they've added up while they were drinking coffee. On the QB, you've got to get a licensed CPA to go through those numbers. So they're going to be actual factual numbers you can trust. That's going to make the company more transparent. They do have a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. I'm telling you to always look for these, so that looks good. Only thing that don't look too great here is they're a shell risk. Shell risk means they're in business, but they're not making any money, and that is never a good thing. Now, we have looked at MUMD before. We just didn't get to focus in on it. It was one of those stocks I had left over, so I gave you the ticker, and I gave you the catalyst. Now, the catalyst was a 8K that came out overnight on the 13th. I think that's actually when I showed this to you. And these sort of filings come out all the time that management has changed. And you don't see a lot of stocks run on that. But this stock was running strong. And that's why I pointed it out to you. Now, there is nothing new on the table since then. No new news presses, no new filings. This is all we've got. And the stock has been climbing ever since then. Now, since the 13th, I've had more time to look into this new CEO. And there is some good information you should know. Because, as I always say, management can make or break a company. They are the most important factor behind a company. If you're going to do DD, don't overlook the management because they can have an excellent product, be making excellent money, and they could make one bad decision and just ruin the company. So I thought sharing this information about the new CEO was important and the stock has been steady climbing. So we're going to take a look at it. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us here that the mission of New Med is to design, develop, and market technologies in the medical device field. Their technologies will focus on market niches and high growth trend areas, and they hope that each developed technology will fill a current need in the medical procedures by improving upon an existing technology or device. So what is our relative volume around this company today? How many more shares today than yesterday? A bunch. 
we went from 610,000 to almost 4 million. Definitely a lot of attention being paid to a stock that has no new catalyst. The last one was seven days ago, a full week, and she is still pushing. What is the share structure here? Well, that's questionable. <laughs> you know, here recently, I've been verifying what numbers they give me here. I go looking for the float on Google or the disclosures. Now, here we're on a QB. There are no disclosures. There are 10Ks and 10Qs because the CPA looks at them. In disclosures on the pinks, I am finding the floats. They list them in there. But on these 10Ks and 10Qs, they are not listing the floats, only the outstanding shares. And when I go to Google, boy, I get a lot of different numbers and I try to date them, but there's not dates on a lot of these sites. So I'm really not sure what the numbers are. And I came up with a lot of different numbers trying to verify this one. So I'm not real exactly sure what the float is because I can't find it posted anywhere. So we've got between 12 million where they say the float is and the unrestricted, which is what I'm always thinking the float is. So between 12 and 24 million, best I can do, folks. Financials, they're sad. They're shell risk because they are making absolutely no money at any time. We don't see a dollar was ever made. So something, something has got to change here. And that may be the excitement because this CEO has got a lot of connections that can help this company make some money. Disclosures, we got anything over here we need to take a look at. All of their financials are up to date and we have that 8K. And this 8K is really where it all started. On September 12th, 2022, Jeffrey L. Robbins resigned as president, chief executive officer, director, and chairman of the board. And Dr. Brett J. Earl resigned as director. None of these individuals had any disputes with the company. The corporation has appointed Mr. William Hayde as the president, chief executive officer, director, and chairman of the board. And that was all we had then. Now, there was more news out there about Mr. Hayden. I just didn't have time to look it up. Today, I did. And this is some of the information I found about the man. So I've jumped on over here to Microcap Daily to get this information. The new controlling shareholder and CEO, Mr. William Hayde, is currently the vice president and co-founder at Intercontinental Beverage Capital, known as IBC. And he is also the managing director at Waterside Capital Advisors, as well as Interim Opportunity Fund. The man's got a lot going on. Now, the IBC team, that Intercontinental Beverage Capital, they have more than 150 years experience with global brands, including Coca-Cola, Red Bull, Danone, Molson Coors, Heineken, Cadbury, Eboo, which is a cannabis drink, Revlon. I found another page that had a long list of companies we all recognize. So this company's been around doing business with lots of the big companies we're familiar with. Mr. Haight is also a Wall Street professional with 25 years in the investment, banking, and securities industry. He has successfully raised a significant amount of growth and acquisition capital for middle market companies and facilitated mergers, acquisitions, financial restructurings. This sounds like the kind of man this company needs. I mean, we saw no money, no revenues for four years, not a penny. This man seems to have a lot of experience. So hopefully, and I think this is why the chart is still moving they have faith that this man is going to actually bring in a revenue and hopefully soon right they go on to tell us that Haight is currently registered as an investment banker with Network One Financial Securities that's a big operation since January 2011 his current FINRA licenses include Series 6, 7, 24, 55, 63. Not that we know what the heck that means. My point, he is connected into the investment securities arena. He could be the absolute man we need for this company. Management, they can make or break a company. Let's hope that he makes this company. Let's go check out that chart. So we're going to be looking at NUMD on my free trading platform. This is Thinkorswim. Just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free trading account, and they'll let you use this anytime you want, absolutely free. So this is a six-month, four-hour view for NUMD. 
Price hasn't been doing a whole lot of anything. We had a dip here, she came back up. So for the most part, she's only been going sideways. Had no intention of climbing, trying to meet the 200. So she's just been sitting down here, biding time for months, waiting for the 200 to come to her. And when it got close enough, it made an attempt to get on top. That was a nice run right there, but she didn't hold it. She came down, fell on that 15, has been sitting there until the filing came out on the 13th. And you can see what I mean. She has been pushing up ever since with nothing new on the table. And look at all that volume for one filing. That is incredible, folks. Technicals are outstanding. This is our PPO percentage price oscillator. A lot like the MACD, but the MACD works with the full price. Percentage price oscillator works with the percentage of the price, right? Both of those are shooting for the stars. Look great. Even our RSI is in the overbought right now. 20-day, one-hour view. So here we are at the 14th. The 13th, that filing came out real late. Everybody woke up to it and she jumped. And this is when I shared the information with you, the ticker and the catalyst. And you can see she has been climbing ever since. It's not just been a rocket run. It has just been a steady climb with some rolls in there. She bounced off the 20 here two days ago, got up off of it, and is now sitting on top of it again. She could bounce off of it. Our SMAs look good here, but our technicals look a little weaker. We still have our PPO in a decent position. Our MACD has fallen underneath, and our RSI is a bit tempted at 55. Five-day, five-minute view. So we've got some rolls going in there. You had a big jump here, and what day is it? That's the 14th. She took off at the bell, had a good, strong run. Another bounce up, and we've got rolls in here, but you can see we've got some nice climbs and then falls, climbs and falls, and now we are sitting on the 200, which just came into the picture perfectly, sitting right there on it. Technicals really don't show a lot of hope. They're weak. Our PPO is underneath the pink, our MACD is under the signal line, and our RSI is down into the 40s right now. So there's not a lot of energy and power down there. But I didn't expect a lot of energy and power from this stock even on the day the filing came out. She's been surprising me every single day, which is why I'm showing it to you. This isn't big growth every day, but it is steady growth. And I figure with this man, something's gonna happen. I would figure the first thing he's gonna do is bring out a news press, tell us what his plans are, you know, a uh, CEO newsletter to the shareholders, something like that. And I will be expecting this stock to move whatever he says because he's gonna try to pump us up with dreams and speculations. So keep your eye on NUMD. Hasn't got any catalyst, but it is growing. And that's what we really want in the stock, right? Who cares about the catalyst? We want the gains. We're now going to take a look at a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker VRAX Virax Biolabs. They finished today at just under $3.50 with just over 41% gains. Now, they had some big important news come out today, and I'm just going to jump right into it. This came out today, Virax Biolabs, which is an innovative diagnostic company focused on the prevention, detection, and diagnosis of viral diseases, announced today the distribution of monkeypox virus antigen rapid test kits, which has been launched in markets accepting the CE mark, such as the European Union. These test kits are for use in point-of-care settings and can help healthcare professionals accurately identify monkeypox with results typically available in just 15 minutes. The CEO of Virac says, I'm very proud of our organization's ability to quickly bring this rapid antigen test kit to the market to help combat the monkeypox outbreak. And that's the big deal here. They're bringing it to market. They're not testing it. They're not thinking of creating one. They've got one done and ready to be used. And doctors anywhere can start buying them, at least in the EU. I don't know about the US yet. Do we use the CE here? I don't know. I'd have to check that out. But they need to make money. Their financials are not looking good, so they need a product. You know, most of your biotechs are actually research and development companies. They're spending a lot of money searching for that miracle drug. And until they find it, they're not making any money at all. And that could be the case with this company. So this is big news for them. Taking a look at that relative volume around that news, it was huge. Wow. We got a jump from 1.4 million to 62 million. Hey, the fact of the matter is, the word monkeypox is a hot buzzword right now. 
any news press comes out, it doesn't matter if they're thinking about making a test kit, they are making a test kit, or they're marketing a test kit. It doesn't matter. Put the word monkeypox in your news press and watch the company start to rise that day. So when you're doing your news reading, you see anything with monkeypox, put that ticker on your watch list. Very good chance it's going to run today. What are their financials? Well, they're not as good as you would think. Back in 2020, they did $99,000. We know that's thousands because they tell us to put three zeros behind all the numbers down here. 123,000 at the end of last year. And this last annual, which ended for them in March, they did zero. Zero. And then quarterly, they're making no money at all. So they absolutely need a product. And this is a hot product, very timely. God forbid we actually have a breakout of monkeypox. But all the doctors are going to want to be prepared. People are going to want these tests to make sure they're not sick. So I can see this getting out there in a big way. This could be a good moneymaker for them. Disclosures. We got anything new over here? Well, we do have a 6K that came out today. And basically, the 6K is the news press. They just put it in a filing and they put it in the news. So let's go take a look at that chart and see how much she was running today. As you would expect, we are looking at a six-month, four-hour chart for VRAX. Now, this high bubble is at the very end of July, which is not too long ago, and it's $29. And we had a low yesterday of $2.42. And right now, our price is about $3.50. And look at this drop, folks. I don't know why it fell, but it went from $29 down to $4.50. dollars almost 25 bucks in less than 12 hours. And I have no clue why, not a hint. I could only guess with these biotechs, it's very common that if they have a failed drug trial, boom, the market just drops right out from under them. And that's kind of what that looks like. She did have a bounce off of that low, but it didn't hold for very long. And she's been falling all of this time. She's had lots of volume come in today, a huge amount of it. And bouncing off of this low bubble with the news press as Nitro, she was able to get out from underneath all the SMAs right up here, sitting perfectly perched on top of the 50-day SMA. Looks really good. We do have strong technicals. They are showing strength being produced. We got a crossover right there, imminent on our PPO. We get that blue line over top of the pink, we get more power. We got our MACD. You can see the green lines are getting bigger and bigger up here, these bars, and our MACD itself is about ready to cross the floor, which we call the signal line. Once it gets above that, you get more strength. And speaking of strength, our RSI is right under the floor of strength. We are at 58 right now, 60. Anything above 60 is where I see strength coming into the picture. So all of the oscillators we have below are showing that this stock is growing in strength right now. 20 day, one hour view. So she's been falling, had one attempt here to break the 200 and failed and has been falling. But what really looks good on this chart is that 200 day SMA. She has come all the way down here and is virtually planed out right now and looks like she could start going up. And if she starts curving up, she's gonna help drag that price up with her and change the trend of this company. She is arguing right now at that 200, sitting on top of her 10 day SMA, which is really a nine day EMA. So she's in a good place, but it is being tested right now. Technicals show that. There's lots of strength, but there's a slight pullback on it. Our five day, five minute view nothing happy going on for the last four days our bounce off of the low bubble and a high pre-market of three dollars and 78 cents fell when the bell happened and pretty much went sideways the rest of the day now as you can see all the gains were pre-market this is a nasdaq stock so you and i can trade this no special permissions no special qualifications are necessary all you've got to remember to do is to change your time frame on your order. It is an extension. It can be day plus extension, good till canceled plus extension, but you got to have extension on your order or it will just ignore it. And you can see we are way above our 50% mark. I like to put a line down at the bottom of the surge, up at the top of the surge, and then split it in half. You can do it mathematically or eyeball it. Close enough is good enough. But you can see we are far above that middle line. And that's what you want. You want your price to stay above this. If it comes below it, chances are it's going to keep coming down. So this looks really good. The only thing that doesn't look good really is this 200-day haul. That's like a 200-day SMA. 
takes 200 days, averages them all together, and then gives more credence to current prices. And it was climbing here, but it went sideways all day, so it's yanking it back down. But you're getting the price stuck between a 200-day haul and a 200-day SMA, so it could squeeze like toothpaste. And which way will it go when it gets squeezed? Well, you gotta look down here at your oscillators. This is pointing down. This is looking a little weak right now. Yeah, that's coming down. So it does look like she wants to fall. She could come down to the 200-day SMA and bounce. I don't know. VRAX has a hot product. It's probably going to sell big to all the doctors. They need some revenues. I don't know when we're going to hear about the revenues. We're going to have to wait three months for that. Mm. So I would keep my eye on this tomorrow just to see if there's a continuation. It doesn't really look like it, but if this company comes out with any more news using that word monkeypox, I bet it jumps again. Keep your eye on VRAX. Now this next company had some exciting news today, especially if you're a gamer or you're into the metaverse, NFT, blockchain. This is ticker GMER, Good Gaming Inc. Finished today at six cents with just over 87% gains. They too are on the middle tier of the OTC where they have to audit their financials. They got both those green ticks I'm telling you to always look for and they got a bonus. They're penny stock exempt. That is a good thing, folks. Now, I know it's six cents and they're on the OTC, but they are not a penny stock anymore. They've proven themselves to be more reliable. They're not a starter company anymore. They're not that risky. How did they prove that? You have to be in business for three to five years, have a clean record, all of your filings always on time, and you've got to have millions of dollars in assets during that entire period of time. And they've done that. So they've proven themselves to be all grown up and reliable. So this is a safer company to invest in. So what is Gamer all about? Well, they're about games. Good Gaming is an innovative brand leading the gaming industry across multiple segments in the space since 2008. They're involved with blockchain, NFT, metaverse. They have just gotten the game Minecraft. They're working with that now. Prison, Skyblock, but their baby, the one they're real excited about, is Micro Buddies. They had news come out today about it, and I'm just going to jump on over to that right now. This came out today, September 20th. Good Gaming Inc. today announced the official launch date for the integration of Micro Buddies brand on the Roblox gaming platform. The official launch date of MicroBuddy's World is set for September 21st. That's tomorrow, folks. Uh, the MicroBuddy's World Experience in Roblox promises to reward players with a unique MicroBuddy's themed virtual world experience designed to capture a player's imagination by immersing them in engaging quests, fun contests, and competitive games. And you can earn a crypto. It's called Goo. You can earn a crypto while you're in there, so you can use that money to increase your character's strength, power, whatever you know now they're doing all of this on roblox they're doing their minecraft now on roblox micro buddies on roblox and roblox is a huge platform they tell us down here that roblox is one of the world's most popular platforms for shared immersive experiences with over now get these numbers with over 50 million daily active users amassing over 30 billion hours of gameplay and over 1 billion dollars spent on virtual goods spanning over 180 countries since its inception in 2008 and you can play roblox virtually anywhere from an xbox to a cell phone laptop tablet or pc users can also dip in and out of different virtual worlds as they share experiences with their friends Roblox is a free, user-generated content platform that spans a myriad of genres and titles, all created by its community of over 10.5 million active creators and developers. And there's more information here, but that's basically it. They're launching Micro Buddies tomorrow, and this is a metaverse game that everybody's been waiting for. So what was the relative volume around this company's news today? She normally does 755,000. She only did 7 million shares. I'm surprised. I am surprised by that. It was a nice gain. So I expect her to actually do more tomorrow. I just get this feeling because we haven't had a whole lot of metaverse excitement here lately. And Micro Buddies has been talked about for quite a while. And there's more to it. There, You should do some more deep dive into Micro Buddies. It's a whole lot of information. And you can work with NFTs and cryptos and all sorts of stuff.
Uh, financials, is this company making any money yet? They are. They are. At the end of 2021, they made $374,000. Remembering those three zeros up there. And goodness gracious, they got to keep most of it. That's what comes with digital products. You don't have to have a factory make anything. You don't have to buy any materials. You're just putting it online and people use it. So there's very little money you got to spend except to pay yourself, right? So they got to keep most of the money they made. Quarterly, how are they doing? Uh-oh, what the heck is going on there? So it dropped 269 to 44 to 1,000 to nothing. And there's everybody getting paid, $111,000. So they definitely need to be making some money. And I'm not quite sure how you do it with these gaming. Is it advertisements or what? I'm not real sure. Disclosures, we got any sort of 8Ks or anything over here? Well, we've got their most recent financial that came out in the middle of last month. If you really want to get to know the company, jump into that 10Q. It's not like a disclosure. There's lots of information in there. You got all the numbers at the top, and then they talk about the numbers and everything else down at the bottom in all the words. Just look for the headings and use your search. Search for what you're looking for. You'll find it a lot easier that way. So that is the news. They are running on micro buddies, and I think this could run some more. Let's go take a look at that chart and see if it looks like it could run some more. Gamer, G-M-E-R, six-month, four-hour review. We've been here before. We looked at this back on April 18th. She had a run here from, uh, oh, we're looking at about four cents to eight cents. She had a 100% jump right there. Uh, she was trying to get through the 200 for the very first time after a long time. Didn't quite do it, fell underneath it. Another stab right there. And then you got a huge stab today. I'm going to get rid of those lines so we can see clear. You can see now the volume is increasing. Our bars are getting bigger and bigger. It may be short in between, but we have higher highs. So we see the volume is getting stronger. And today she has definitely broke the 200 and is sticking above it. And our technicals are very strong. We have a bounce off of the pink on our PPO going straight up. Same thing with the MACD. Everything has really jumped hard. Boy, our RSI, how high is that? 79 on the four hour. Everything looks really good on the four hour. Can't say it doesn't. 20 day, one hour chart. So she was under everything about 10 days. In the last 10 days, she's been working to get above that 200 and stay on it. She tested it once, tested it twice. There's a serious test right there. And thank God the news came along to yank her back up on top of that 200 and then shoot. And look, folks, we ended the day on a high note. This is looking really good. Volume was very strong at the end of the day. A lot of attention being paid to this. Technicals across the board. PPO, ADX for continuation of trend. MACD, which I got to scroll down to see the top. And our RSI. Everything is blazing to the moon right now on the hourly on Gamer. Five day, five minute. So she hasn't done much really until today. I mean, she was rolling around. She actually fell underneath the 200, hit a low bubble here. We're bouncing off of a low bubble with nitro boost from the news press. She took off right at the bell from just over three cents. Hit a good pop here at, uh, what is that? About 11.30 of uh, five and a half cents. And then got up here at six and a half cents. And we've had a pullback. Now it's just a pullback, it's not a fall. Almost every time you see a high bubble, everybody gets a little fearful. They're afraid they're going to bump their head or something. So they just pull back. And then they realize, oh, we can go higher. And then it goes back to it. So we've hit a bu high bubble. She's pulled back. She's sitting on her 10, which is what she's been riding on most of the time here. Looks like the 20 saved her butt here. She could come down to the 20. You might see that happen. But right now, she's sitting on that 10 with a lot of volume and a lot of interest. Technicals do look weak. I got to admit, they all look a little bit weak, like she could fall down to that 20. But honestly, I would anticipate it to bounce off the 20. And I'm getting a feeling, just because the metaverse has been so cold lately, we just haven't, for a while there, it was the buzzword, like monkeypox is now. Anybody put the word metaverse, and it was getting used and abused, no doubt about it. But this is one of the first metaverse stocks that we've seen running on metaverse news. And thank God it was something decent. Micro Buddies game that you can play tomorrow. So I get the feeling 
just having micro buddies come out, people could get excited. I'm not a gamer, but I used to have fun with games and I can feel what they're probably feeling. So I would keep my eye on GMER tomorrow and continually because this is a penny stock exempt stock that is in the metaverse, is in NFTs, blockchain. They do a lot more. Some uh, DD of your own will definitely pay off with this company. GMER. I like it and I haven't even played the games yet. Now, the truth is I did have a few extra stocks I could have shared with you, the leftovers. I could give you the ticker and the catalyst. But to be honest, I was late getting started on this video. I had something come up and I would like to get this out before 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm going to have to cut it off here. But there's three stocks for you. Each have got their own catalyst. Each have potential for things to be happening right now. And the one thing all three stocks have in common, they all need revenue in a big way way. So I'd keep my eye on the news. I'd keep my eye on the filings. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.